my father's place, proclaiming Jesus Christ to the world. Good morning and welcome to my father's place. I have a very extreme sounding word for today, but it's in order to shock you into reality. Oh, so-called church, you who call yourselves the church, but do not even know that you are burning. So the title of the message is The Burning Church. I will pray and then I will speak. Lord, you have shown me the church is no different than Judah in the days of Isaiah. They do the same things. They turn to something pleasing instead of obeying you, Lord. May the so-called church of today see it and turn from their ways for you have said and will say in this passage that if they do it, you will kill them. Thank you for this word, Lord. Amen. He will heal you, but right now you're burning and you don't even realize it. You are surrounded. What is burning you? The Lord's anger against you. The Father is angry at you because you are not doing what his son commanded you to do. So you don't even see the flames of God's judgment against you for disobeying his son's commandments regarding the spirit to stay and wait until you're filled. It's the second part of salvation, you know. First part is to be forgiven for your past sins and reconciled to God. But then you are to go on and obey him. If you don't obey him, you are not reconciled to him. So you don't see his flames of judgment here and now. And unless you repent, you will be in the flames of hell after the Lord judges you at the end of things when you stand before him. In today's church. It is amazing and it is shocking that in today's church, no one recognizes their spiritual condition. You don't realize that you are burning. You are so disconnected from Jesus Christ and the Father, you don't even see that you are being judged by him, even here and now. How can that be? You are deaf and blind. I'll read from Isaiah 42, 18 through 20. Hear you, deaf. He's speaking to his people, Judah. Hear you, deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? Or so deaf is my messenger whom I send? Who is so blind as he that is at peace with me, or so blind as the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you do not observe. You do not take heed. Your ears are open, but none hears. You're deaf and blind. You can neither hear him nor see his judgment of you even now. You are supposed to be his servant. Who is blind but my servant? But you can't be his servant if you can't see. Think of it. If somebody who's rich has a servant and that servant is blind, what can that servant do for him? Nothing. Who are you blind to? The Lord, his truth. Who is so blind but my servant? So you can't be his servant because you are blind. You're supposed to be his servant, but you're blind. Or so deaf is my messenger whom I send. You're supposed to go forth with beautiful feet, with the gospel, but you can't hear it. The gospel you like to hear is not the gospel at all. So he isn't going to send you. You're supposed to be his messenger. You're supposed to be his servant. But he's not going to send you. And you do not serve him. You serve yourself by loving a Jesus that is another Jesus. Who is so blind as he that is at peace with me? Oh, you think you're at peace with God, but you are not at peace with him, beloved, because you have disobeyed him. He has told you what you must do, and you must do it in order to have your heart cleansed and in order for the Father and the Son and the Spirit to come in. Then you will serve him. Then you will be his servant. 
then you will no longer rebel against him. Then you won't manufacture for yourself another Jesus like I used to. Who is so blind? Oh, we're at peace with you, Lord. Yes, we're sure of it. Yes, and, and all those who lie from pulpits and ministries across the globe will say, oh, yes, you're fine. Don't worry about that. You're, you're good to go blind. You think you're at peace. They say peace, peace when there is no peace between you and God because you won't obey. You're surrounded by the fire of the Lord's fury against you and you don't even know it. You're burned and you don't even take notice and respond and say, oh, I'm burning. I must be being judged. I'd better turn to the Lord. No, you don't do any of that. You don't even realize it's going on because the ones in the pulpits and the ministries tell you you're okay. So you've seen many things, but you do not observe them. Well, you know, you're not blind to what false gospel is. You like that. You like to hear it, too. It pleases you. It makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but it's not the truth. You do not observe. You do not take heed of the word of God. You just listen to someone's interpretation who is not even one who knows the Lord. No matter if they have a doctor's degree or a master's degree. Oh, I tell you the truth. We have been with them and they do not know him. Your ears are open, but none hears. You love the sweet sounding words that they tell you. You love them, but you do not love the truth. This is the truth that I speak, and many of you will turn away from it. That I can't control. But what I am required to do is speak it to you, and that I will do. So, hear you deaf. You're deaf. He says, hear me. You foolishly love and serve and go after and seek and worship a false Jesus, another Jesus. But none hears. Why? You close your ears to the warnings of those he has sent to you again and again. You don't want to hear it. You want to hear the lies which you think are truth that are coming from pulpits and ministries across the globe spoken by people who do not know him or they would never lie. Oh, if they lie, who is their father? Oh my goodness, their father is Satan. So you're listening to the children of Satan. And they tell you whatever tickles your ears, whatever makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. But you're burning. And no fire department can put it out. There's just one way for you to be released from your condition, and I will show it to you. So, you refuse the Lord's commandments. You're told it's not necessary by the liars whose father is Satan. Look, you blind... That's the hearing part. Look, you blind ones. Hear, you deaf ones. Now he says, look, you blind ones. You have smeared your eyes over. They will give you words, and you'll just go like that. And say, oh, now I can look at the Bible. Oh, yeah, that looks all right to me. That's what you'll do. You don't see your spiritual condition because of that. But you're sin-sick and spiritually poverty-stricken. For you do not even know the real Jesus Christ. The thing you worship is not him at all. You pay no attention to the word of God, but love the words of those who lie to you. And you will say to me, oh, the Lord can't possibly be speaking to me because I go to church every Sunday and my pastor tells me I'm fine with the Lord. I'm saved, you will say to me, but I will say, if you have not obeyed his commandments regarding the Spirit, you are not saved, because if you really believed 
that Jesus is the Christ, you would obey his commandments immediately. So you really don't believe in Jesus Christ. You just go to church and say you believe. Do you not know because you are deaf, you cannot hear his commands? You have made yourself deaf. You had a choice. You could go to this word and see what it really says, or you could just say, well, that sounds good to me when you hear something from the pulpit. Because you're blind, you cannot walk on the earth with beautiful feet. You have nothing, nothing to, you just go around in circles of confusion. You have nothing that you can give to the world that is salvific, that will cause them to be saved. Nothing. Do you not know? You're apart from him, so you can do nothing. You can't hear where he would command you to go. You can't walk there because you can't see. Do you not know? He says you should be his servants. He says you should be carrying the gospel. He says you should be his messengers. But you can do nothing. Because you have not believed into the real Jesus Christ. You believe a false Jesus, and it cannot save you. Why are you spiritually deaf and blind? I mentioned it earlier, but I'll speak to it now, and I'll speak to it the rest of the time that I preach today. You have done it to yourself. You love and serve and go after and seek and worship that which is false. It's no different than the idols of the Old Testament. No different than the idols of the Old Testament. It's a shiny, attractive Jesus, but it's not the real Jesus Christ. Not at all. So you become what you worship. Psalm 115.4 through 6. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of man's hand. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Those who make them will become like them, everyone who trusts in them. You're trusting in a man-made Jesus. Men's hands formed him. They plucked a little scripture here, a little scripture there, and made him into an idol that you worship. all pleasant and sweet, with no fire and no call to repentance. You have become what you worship. You cannot see or hear, just like those idols. You cannot speak for him. You have become what you worship, the false Jesus who can do none of those things. Again, Isaiah 42, 19. Who is blind but my servant, or so deaf as my messenger? Who is so blind as he that is at peace with me, or so blind as the servant of the Lord? Verse 20, you have seen many things, but you do not observe, you do not take heed. Your ears are open, but none hears. Who is responsible? I say again, for your awful spiritual condition. You are. But you're offended at this truth. You say, I haven't done anything wrong. I go to church. I listen to the pastor. I do my little short devotion in the morning with one verse taken completely out of context. Yet you think you're at peace with him. The fire burns. You, you don't even take heed. You don't even notice. You're too busy worshiping your false Jesus. So the Lord has given you up. To whom? To those who rob you of the truth and give you over 
to Satan their father, for they are liars just like him. Hear his words on this. Isaiah 42, 24, Who gave Jacob for a spoil that is to be captive? And Israel to the robbers, did not the Lord he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Well, the Lord gave them over, you will say. It says here, yes, he did. That's his judgment because you would not walk in his ways and you would not observe his truth and do it. You sin, you do not walk in his ways. You do not obey his commandments. So he gives you over. You are burning with the heat of the Lord's anger. It surrounds you. You are burned and you don't even notice because you're listening to lies. Isaiah 42, 25. So he poured out on him, he pours out on you, the heat of his anger and the fierceness of battle. And it set him aflame all around, yet he did not recognize it. And it burned him, but he paid no attention. It, it grieves him, it grieves me. Why is he judging you? Because you refused to obey him. If you had obeyed him, he would not judge you. Therefore, even now, while you are on the earth, he judges you. Why? That you might hear? That you might somehow something might break through the cloud of falsehood that surrounds you? Even while you're still on the earth, he judges you. You are on fire. You are burning, and you don't even know it. You pay no attention. You do not say, oh, something's wrong. Oh, I must not be right with God. I have to get right with... No, nothing like that. You don't even see. Because everyone that is supposed to know him tells you you're fine. They don't tell you your true spiritual condition. They don't know their own because they don't know God. They sound like they do. They'll read the scriptures and they'll fashion them into the lie they want to tell you. But they don't know him. They would never, I could never speak like these. Never. I, I just, I, not in my wildest dreams would I ever even think of lying to you. This is the truth. The reason that I speak from the scriptures and take them apart and show you what they mean is so that you would see that's the truth, not what you're listening to and loving now. You don't turn back to him. He, you're burned, and you still don't turn back. You are so deceived, you don't see it. You have made yourself that way, though, because you chose to listen to those that will leave you deaf and blind leave you in your horrible spiritual condition, poverty, stricken, and sin sick. So you continue to sin despite his warnings to you from those who know him. And do you not know? Hell's jaws are open wide to receive you after you stand before Jesus and he says, I never ever knew you because you never, ever knew him. Well, what can be done? Is there any hope? There's something you can do. Isaiah 52, 11. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch nothing unclean. Go out of the midst of her. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. Oh, you are supposed to be, you are supposed to be a vessel of the Lord. If you go out from all the lies, that you are listening to, if you go away from all those ministries whose words you love and you do what Jesus Christ says you must do, then you will be a vessel of the Lord. Go out from there. Go out from the false leaders and false prophets whose words you have loved. But this warning from Isaiah, was that just? For the Old Testament, you will tell me that's the Old Testament. We don't even, we're told we don't even need to read that. And I have told you over and over again, the Old Testament was the only Bible 
that the early church had, and they did very well by it. So was the warning just for Judah in Isaiah's day? Oh, not at all. In 2 Corinthians 6.17, Paul repeats it to the church at Corinth, the ones that are listening to false ones, the ones that are worshiping a false Jesus. He says, therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, that is, be purified, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. I will receive you. If you go away from all the uncleanness of the lies that you have listened to and loved and the Jesus that you have loved and served and gone after and sought and worshipped, go away from all of that. Come out from their midst. He will purify you if you do as he commands and you stay and wait to be filled. He will first come in and cleanse your heart, purify it, crucify your sin nature, and in that same moment, he and the Father and the Spirit will come in to fully and permanently indwell you, and you will no longer sin. You will cease from sin so as to live the rest of the time in the body, not for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. When they come in permanently and fully and dwell you, you will hear them all the time and you will see the truth. You will no longer be deaf and blind. You will be his servants. You will be his messengers. As he requires. You will go forth with beautiful feet because you will have something to carry to the world, just as Jeff and I do through this ministry. He will heal you. He will heal you of your sin sickness if you will turn from what you are believing in and obey and believe into the real Jesus Christ. He says in 2 Corinthians 6.18 that if you come out from them, he says, I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Will be, I will be, if you will come out, he will be your father and you will be his son or his daughter. You will be, not may be, you will be, but you must come out. You must come out from the web of lies that has been woven by liars to entrap you. Jesus says this to all who do not come out, but continue to love and serve and go after and seek and worship a false Jesus. He says this to you who do that. Matthew 13, 14. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding, you will be ever seeing but never perceiving. Verse 15, for this people's heart has become callous. They hardly, actually, they do not hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Glory to God, he will do it. He did it in me, he did it in Jeff. He will do it. Why would you not want to be healed? You love your sin. You love your false Jesus. There is a remedy. You can be healed of your hardened, sin-sick heart. Turn. Repent. Again, to repent is to utterly destroy the lives you have loved, and it is to utterly pulverize to powder your false Jesus, who is simply an idol made by man's hands and imagination. Glory to God. Then you will surely obey his commandments regarding the Spirit after you do that. And when you do it, he will permanently 
heal you of your sin sick heart because once he and the Father and the Spirit come in and have cleansed you completely, sin is no longer in you. As I said, you no longer sin. You don't have a hard heart. You hear every word. You respond to everything. Not like a robot, but as one who loves Jesus Christ, as one who loves the Father, to the point where they obey him and are filled with him and his divine love. And by that, they are propelled out into the world, hearing, seeing, and carrying this message of life. Amen, Lord. The fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth